it does say Cal on my uniform. Hey, and welcome to Making FX. This episode is a little different from others I've done in that it is more of an experiment. I've been re-watching Stargate SG-1 lately, and in my opinion, one of the best sci-fi shows ever. A big effect for the movie and the multiple series was the Stargate itself. Whenever the wormhole engaged, a massive watery plume appeared before collapsing in on itself into an event horizon. Fans call it the Kawoosh. Although, if you're watching this video, there's a big chance you know all that already. And it is also fairly likely that you know the original effect was created by an air cannon blasting air into a large tank of water. I don't have an air cannon water tank or the threat of being fired by Roland Emmerich. And if you search for Stargate Kawoosh on YouTube, you'll find a few 3D tutorials showing how to use 3D software to recreate the effect. Why this video is an experiment is that this is a way to recreate the effect using only After Effects and its included plugins. I think I get the look pretty close and has the benefit for you of not needing to learn 3D software when you're interested in VFX compositing. I'm going to puppet shapes in 2.5D space and then use 2D effects to blend them together. I'll spend a little bit of time adding effects to help sell the look. The massive benefits of this approach is the rendering time is super short, and not being a simulation, you have a lot more control. Let's get started. Here's an HD comp at 30 frames per second, and the first thing I'm going to do is create a null object by going to Layer, New, Null Object. Hit Enter to rename it and call it Stargate Null and make it 3D. Next, create a camera by going to Layer, New, Camera, and this will determine our angles and so on. Make a new solid by, you guessed it, Layer, New, Solid. Make it a thousand pixels square. Rename this to Event Horizon Start, and make it 3D as well. And now use the Orbit tool to move the camera around. Now with the Event Horizon Solid selected, select the Ellipse tool and then double click on it to add a circular mask to the solid. Now scrub ahead in the timeline to where you want the wormhole to start and tap T to expose the layer's opacity. Have it fade up over the course of about 10 frames. Jump back to the first keyframe and click off the layer and then tap the asterisk key on the number pad to set a comp marker. We'll use this to help time all the animations. I got these timings by going frame by frame through the original show. So move ahead one second and then tap the page up key three times so we're 27 frames on from the first marker. And set a new marker here. This is the midpoint of the animation. Now, we need to jump 34 frames ahead of where you are. One way to do this is to click on the current time display and in the frames panel, add into the frame number the result. In my case, 27 plus 34. And AE takes care of the maths. And set a new marker. That's the end of the animation to produce the wormhole. Use the ellipse tool again, and draw a circle shape layer. Make it 3D, and name it Bulge. Make it a child of the Stargate null, and zero out all the anchor and position properties. In the contents field, delete the stroke and set the fill color to white. Then expand the ellipse path section and set the size to 600. Now go to layer, Transform, or to Orient, and set it to always face the camera. So we fake a perfect unshaded sphere by never seeing more than a circle face on. Tap T to expose the opacity property, and use the pick whip to link this layer's opacity to the event horizons. And now tap P to expose the position properties, and set a keyframe. Then set the Z value to 750. And then, scrub the timeline to the second marker. Holding shift will snap you into place. And set a new Z value to minus 1400. 
Then jump to the third marker, but use the page up key to go back six frames. Remember, I'm matching the timings to the original, don't blame me. And set a new Z value to about 150. Select the final two keyframes, right click and choose Keyframe Assistant, Easy Ease. Making sure the bulge layer is selected, go to Edit, Duplicate. Rename this layer to Midpoint 1, and then tap P to expose its positions. Clear out all the keyframes to avoid confusion, and use the Pick Whip to link its position to the bulge's position. But, then expand the expressions area, and edit the expression so it looks like this. Var, pos, equals. And at the end of the line, add a semicolon. And then on a new line type, x equals, pos, square brackets, zero, semicolon. New line, y equals, pos, square brackets, one, semicolon. z equals, pos, square brackets, two, and outside the square brackets, times, 0 0.25 semicolon square brackets x comma y comma z make sure all the brackets are closed so this expression is saying set the x and y positions to match but for the z position make sure its value is a quarter of the bulge's z position duplicate midpoint one twice and after effects has helpfully renamed the layers for us for midpoint two Edit the expression and change the Z multiplier to 0.5 or half. And edit midpoint 3 and set the same to 0.75, 3 quarters. And let's see what that looks like. Oh, um, I'm totally getting banned from YouTube for this. Let's make it a little worse by reducing the circle sizes for each midpoint. So midpoint 1 is about 590. Midpoint 2 should be around 520. And midpoint 3 to 560. So we get sort of a look. You can see what we get, a narrow bit which bulges out. On the timeline at the third keyframe for bulge, set an opacity keyframe for the event horizon start. And then at the third marker, set a new keyframe to zero so it fades out. What we can do now is use an adjustment layer which will apply effects to all the layers below it and, depending on the effect, we'll treat them as if they are a single layer. Go to Layer, New, Adjustment Layer. Make sure it's at the top of the comp. And then go to Effect, Blur and Sharpen, Gaussian Blur. Set the blurriness to 100. And if I just move the camera around, you can see, while fuzzy, our setup is responding as if it were a solid object. To take care of that fuzziness, go to Effect, Matte, Simple Choker, and set the amount to 30. See how it's taking shape? I mean, it's still in the Get a Ban realm, but let's alter the edges to make it feel more organic. Incoming wor- well, not wormhole, just an incoming like and subscribe request. Yeah, sorry, but YouTube is run by the gold. And they demand I ask for tribute in the form of likes. Okay, now go to Effect, Stylize, Roughen Edges. Set the border to 50, and set the scale to 60. And set a keyframe for the evolution at the first comp marker. Set the same value for the third marker, tapping U makes this simple. And at the second marker, Set it to run six cycles and ease the last two keyframes so that the speed of evolution sort of lines up with the acceleration and deceleration of the Kermush shapes. And now let's give it some texture. Go to Effect, Noise and Grain, Fractal Noise. And see what I meant earlier about how the adjustment layer is treating the shapes as if it were a single layer? Set the type to Dynamic and the contrast to 115 and up the brightness to 38. In Transform, drop the scale to 70. And in Offset Turbulence, hold Alt and click on the stopwatch. In the Expressions area, use the Pick Whip to select the Bulge layer. 
and then type dot two comp with a capital C brackets square brackets zero comma zero comma zero close both brackets do yourself a favor and copy this expression to your clipboard or paste it into a notepad file as we'll use this again later if I play that back you can see the noise moves with the bulge mimicking the look of the real version's bubbles and also let's use the pick whip to link the fractal noises evolution to the rough and edges evolution actually seeing as we're doing that let's use the rough and edges offset pick whip to have that value controlled by the fractal noises one there one big super convenient family it still looks a little flat though so go to effect distortion bulge and set the horizontal radius to 350 and the vertical radius to about 150. Now, if you move the camera closer or further away, these are values you might need to adjust. So set keyframes for them to make them easy to locate later on. We could attach expression controls, but that might just be overcomplicating things. Use the pick whip to link taper radius to horizontal radius so we don't have to adjust that. And as you can see, we're now getting a large almost bubble next let's use the same two comp trick on the bulge center hold alt and click on the stopwatch and paste in our two comp expression from earlier but change the layer name and quotes to midpoint two the part of the vortex which is in the middle of it so now the bulge travels with the shockwave thingy add another bulge effect this time set all three radiuses to 300 using the pick whip to link them if you like and this time for the center, at the second marker, position the center at the bulge. So we get a more distorted look to the leading edge of the vortex. Again, this is one element you might need to adjust. I could have suggested an expression here, which could control everything from one property. But in this case, with this being an experiment, I think linking too many elements locks you in too much and can limit adaptability. And finally, for this adjustment layer, Go to Effect, Perspective, Bevel Alpha, and set the amount to 200. And then just position this so the event horizon is whited out almost, and the bulge is shaded. It gives us a little fake 3D shading. Okay, so far so good-ish, but we can do more. From the project panel, drag your Kawoosh Comp onto the new Comp button. And you'll see in the timeline, we helpfully have the three markers. Now go to Effect, Color Correction, Tritone, and set the following colors for the midtones and shadows A4B, 3FF, and 27315A. There, getting better. Duplicate the comp so we have another layer, and then go to Effect, Distort, CC Blobalize. Drop the softness and cut away to zero. Expand light and change the direction to 155 so that the highlights point to the event horizon. In shading, drop the ambient and diffuse to zero. And set the transfer mode to screen. So we have all these complex bubbles over the top of our vortex. Now all that's left is set dressing. Firstly, it's going to be a lot easier to control the camera from this main comp, so create a new camera. Then expose the transform controls. And then click on the Kawoosh pre-comp, expose this comp's camera controls, then right click on the comp's name and choose Undock Panel. And drag it up so you can see both comps. Now use the pick whip to link the cameras. Okay, cool. In the main comp, create a new solid. It should still be a thousand pixels square. Drag it to the bottom of the comp, and then add a fractal noise effect. This is going to be our starting event horizon. So name it as such, and make it a 3D layer. Set the type to dynamic and the contrast to 115, and the brightness to 25. In Transform, 
uncheck uniform scaling, then set the width to 30. And now keyframe the offset to match the markers. Leave the horizontal value alone, but set the vertical value to travel from the default 500 to minus 1500 and back again. And even though we'll be obscuring this, set the keyframes to easy ease as before. To make this circular, go to Effect, Distort, Polar Coordinates. Set the type to Rectipolar and max it out. And let's hide the join by rotating the layer Z rotation to 90 degrees. There's better ways to obscure it, but it'll barely be on screen. Go to Effect, Transition, Iris Wipe. Increase the points from 6 to 32. Set a keyframe for the outer edge, and then about 20 frames before the first marker, increase the outer edge value until the layer is no longer visible. Set a feather to about 102, which means you might have to tweak the outer edge value. Copy the tritone effect from the Kawoosh precomp, and have it fade out close to the end of the eruption so it's gone by the final marker. Actually, jump back to the Fractal Noise Offset and drag the starting keyframe to match the Iris Wipes keyframe. And you're done with this layer. Getting close to the end now, duplicate the Event Horizon layer and place it above everything else. Rename it to Flash. We're going to use this layer to obscure any transitions. Delete the Fractal Noise and Iris Wipe effects and remove the existing opacity keyframes. A couple of frames before the Kawoosh's first marker, set the opacity to 100. Then hit page up three times and drop the opacity to zero. We sort of imply as the wormhole rushes in, the energy builds up. And then 10 frames after its second keyframe, drop the opacity back down to 0%. And set the layers transfer mode to add. Now jump to the last marker and set a keyframe. Then about 9 frames back, set a new keyframe to 100% and 3 frames back, set another to 0. Now, duplicate this layer and rename this to Event Horizon. Make sure it's below the flash layer and then delete the polar coordinates effect and in its place add a fractal noise. Change the type to Swirl. And up the contrast to 115. And the brightness to 20. In Transform, drop the scale to 50. And then hold Alt on the Evolution stopwatch and type Time times 50. To get a circular ripple, go to Effect, Distort, Ripple and set the radius to 100 and the type to symmetric. And then do the double click trick on the ellipse tool to add a circular mask. And keyframe this layer so that it starts to appear when the second flash does, and then is 100% when the flash is. And holy cow, that's it. Clocking in at 22 pages of script. Let me know what you think of this experiment. I really like the concept, but it is quite difficult to adapt for other uses. I am especially pleased with myself for the use of CC Blobalize. That adds something different. If you watch this and you're making a Stargate fan film, be sure to come back and post your results in the comments below. And while you have fun making your own Stargates, I'm off to watch season five. This Jonah bloke looks like he's gonna be shaking things up.